Welcome to the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular, featuring live plays, contests, and the Dice Tower Awards. We'd like to thank our sponsors and our special guests, and we hope that you enjoy. Everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Hi, I'm Eric Summer. Welcome to our mega announcement video here. Now, mega. I, I, I saw a bunch of people here are like trying to figure out what's the announcement going to be. It's not about the Dice Tower. <laughs> These are publisher announcements. Yep. And so we got 15 different publishers here. They're announcing various things, uh, many of them for the very first time here. So that's really what this is. Where did, uh, why are we even here? I, I don't. Well, I think we're reacting. Ah. And introducing the next one. I I don't know any of these. Tom knows some of these things that's happening. So this that's is going to be a big surprise for so me. So we're all watching this together. So that's pretty much that's what this is going to be. We got 15 of them. So who's first, Eric? Uh, first we have Renegade Game Studios. Let's take a look. Hi folks, I'm Nikki Valens, designer of Lake. The Madness Second Edition Quirky Circuits, and today I want to tell you about my newest game, Artisans of Splendid Vale, a cooperative adventure game for two to four players coming to Kickstarter this September from Renegade Games. People have been asking me for years if I'll make another story-driven game, and it's taken a long time because I want to create something that will truly speak to the players who may not have felt seen or heard in our community. People of color, queer and trans folks, players with disabilities, players who struggle against mental illness. I wanted these players to see themselves in the characters and in the world. Uh, I wanted them to know that they can be part of a fantasy adventure like anyone else. I'm so proud of the consultants, the writers, and artists who came together to create this beautiful game, and I hope all of you enjoy it. Artisans is set in a brand new fantasy world where plants grow wild and untamed, animals are diverse and fantastical, and on warm summer nights, the sky is illuminated with crimson meteor showers. People from many cultures settled in the Vale, eager to explore the mystery and wonder of the wilds. Together, they founded the Township of Splendens, which values knowledge, craft, and community. After some time, they discovered the meteor showers leave behind a red substance they named Materia. Artisans found that crafting with Materia lends magical qualities to their wares. This is the world you'll explore in Artisans of Splendid Vale, a cooperative story-driven adventure game for two to four players. You'll play as artisans, ambitious creators who explore the wilds in search of Materia and adventure. The team's apothecary, Herenia, brews helpful tonics and potions. Their playstyle during action scenes is highly supportive, ensuring their friends can shine. Harina's empathic bond with animals lets them quickly make friends with the creatures of the Vale. Farah is a tailor who can craft armor for the group. Farah's athletic prowess lends itself to a highly mobile playstyle in action scenes, and their affinity for plants gives them unique insights while exploring the Vale. Hobby, trained as an artificer, builds powerful tools and weapons for the team. His strength and utility during action scenes is bolstered by the augmentations he's made to his prosthetic arm. While exploring, Javi can access traumatic memories of the objects and people he encounters to better understand the dangers of the Vale. As a skilled mason, Soraya knows many magical runes that she can use to enhance the group's equipment. In action scenes, Soraya focuses on defense, vowing to protect her loved ones at all costs. Soraya can gain a unique insight into the feelings and will of objects she touches, allowing her to understand the best way to improve them. Much of the campaign is comprised of narrative exploration, where the group's choices will determine the direction the story takes. During most adventures, you'll work together as a group during a variety of action scenes, which cover combat, chase scenes, and more. These action scenes play out on a tactical map and use a community dice pool to determine the actions available to the characters. In addition to the overarching story and its impacts on the group and the veil, each character can experience character growth and development through personalized interludes between adventures. Characters can develop their skills and potential as an individual over the course of the campaign, unlocking new abilities as they move through their advancement grid. Artisans of Splendid Veil vale is coming to Kickstarter this September from Renegade Games Studios and we'll have more to share over the coming months. I hope you're as excited as I am about this world and the stories we're going to tell in it. 
Yeah, I really like the art design of that. It's it's it seems a lot like uh, K. O'Neill's work. I'm not sure if if they are involved in that, but it it, it has that very comic booky look. There's to definitely it. a lot of art in there. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I was thinking it looked more like a an app, like okay. a video game, yep. like a Switch video game almost. Yep. And I like that look of the bulletin board to your character advancement as you achieve stuff in the game. Looks very very neat. All right, our next one is a interview I did with James Hudson from Skybound Games. So let's jump to that. Hey, folks, it's me here now. I am interviewing James Hudson from Skybound Tabletop. Welcome to the Dice Tower, sir. Hey, Tom. Nice to see you. It is an exciting summer, and last year we saw a lot of games come from Skybound. A very one of the most beautiful games from last year, Title Blades. Uh, was out. So what is coming up from your company this year? We've, we've got a lot of stuff cooking and since you've let off with Tidal Blades, you know, we've got a campaign for Tidal Blades 2 coming to Kickstarter later this fall that is, uh, you know, the game uh, is an adventure style dungeon crawler-esque where you're going to be walking through the narrative and kind of seeing this you know, we really set up the narrative on the front end of the, of the players and the world and now you're going to get to see it come to fruition are, through this are you going to get play. to play the main characters from Tidal Blades in this? Yes. Yeah, so that's why you were, you were training them up in the first game, and now we've got to go out and, you know, save the world. Um, we also partnered with Monty Cook Games uh, to do an RPG because people just really wanted to be able to get into the world, so we're using their cipher system and making an RPG that will also be kind of uh, Voltroned into that uh, campaign. Yes, another question. Yeah, I was going to ask. So with this, is this a different designer? Uh, are any of the mechanisms the same? No mechanisms the same. So it's a, a totally standalone, separate game. Uh, but it is still with Tim and Ben Eisner, who designed the first game, and, and our team here at Skybound. Um, it has a really cool grid system where you, you're building up kind of almost like a deck building mechanic a little bit, and then it gives you different abilities. And when the way that you lay them down on the grid activates rows and columns, and so you can combine cards in fun ways. Then you essentially move out yourself out there on the uh, your mini out there on the board, and it's kind of kind of got a little Gloomhaven vibe to it as far as like the execution of things that you're doing on the board. But this grid system is really satisfying on how you power up and do your stuff. Is it fully co-op? It is. Mm -hmm. All right. So when's this coming to Kickstarter? You said this year. Yeah, October fifth. All right. Well, mark that date, folks. What else you got? Uh, we next up. One of the things you're going to be playing it. I uh, think actually Ella is going to be playing it in the spectacular. Is Kim Joy's Magic Bakery. This is a game where we met Kim Joy. If you don't know who Kim Joy is, she is from the Great British Bake Off, and she was a finalist a couple years ago. She's a huge board gamer. And uh, met her at San Diego Comic-Con. We all hit it off, and we wanted to make a game with her. And it is a fun co-op game that kind of will maybe give you the, a vibe from the crew. Um, but, but I've also heard people say, this reminds me of Kitchen, Kitchen Rush, but without the timer. And so you're, you're working through trying to do these bakes, but there's these different things that kind of come in and mess up your plans. And you got to work through these scenarios. And then at the end, you get a little score based off how well you made it through all the scenarios. So... It's like I said. Just take a look at what Ella shows you. It's gonna be. Uh, it's it's super cute and an easy, very accessible game. I was gonna eat a brownie too while I play it. Absolutely. Uh, and then I think the only other thing that you know is worth talking about right now about things that are coming out is like we actually have a Kickstarter that's live at the moment. It's called Valor and Villainy Ludrix Labyrinth. I've gotten really good at spelling labyrinth. By the way, that's a that's a stupid word to spell. It's just weird, you know. It is. I do agree. I think villainy is a hard word to spell, too. but It is, too. I always want to put the I in front of the A in the English language. And I'm from Alabama. You know, we're 49th in education. I'm a product of my environment. Um, but this game is uh, Valor and Villainy 1, Minions of Mordak. We actually, that came out last year. And it came out to a great reception, 8.0 out on BGG. People really enjoy it. But it was one versus many. Okay, so somebody has to play the bad guy. Everybody else plays the heroes, which, you know, that's polarizing. But on the other end, now this game, Lou Zagabeth, is completely co-op. And so um, the system, you're, you're diving into this labyrinth and you're fighting multiple villains throughout the campaign. It is light legacy. You're not destroying anything. You can reset everything. And it's only eight missions. So instead of getting into one of these things that's going to take you months and months and months to get through, you know, three, four, five game nights, you're through the whole thing. And then you free play mode it at the end. So. All right. Yeah. So if people want to learn more about these, where would they go? 
They can always go to Skybound Tabletop on any of their preferred uh, social media. We also have newsletters, websites, all those things. You just type in Skybound Tabletop. The, the internet will get you there. All righty, James. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thanks, Tom. I'm a, I really like the Tidal Blades universe a cool. lot, and I'm really excited to see more stuff coming in for that. Good, good. It's a very different game, so we'll wait and see. In fact, we're playing a uh, one of their games today, um, Wonderland's War. Oh, yes, that's, yes, That's yes. near the end of today. Real quick note, I know some people asking in the comments, are these paid? These are not. I just put out a wide spread to all the different companies and asked if they want to do an announcement, and these are the ones who said yes. Speaking of which, who's next? One of the next companies to say yes is Blacklist Games. Woo! Hey everyone, Scott McFall here, Brand Director of Blacklist Games, and I'm here today to officially announce and preview an upcoming title from Blacklist Games, Boruto Naruto Next Generations, the board game. I'm joined by designers Jeff Fraser and Mitch Schroeder to take a sneak peek at what you can expect inside this exciting new game. I, I was a big fan of the, uh, the original Naruto series, and uh, Boruto was more new to me, discovering the new, the new franchise and, and learning the stories of these characters with uh, you know, Mitch's encyclopedic knowledge was a lot of fun. I've been a fan of the franchise for a really long time. I watch the show, I read the manga, and uh, I'm even doing this interview right now from my son's bedroom, and I've got uh, Boruto toys kind of all over the place. Boruto the board game is a co-op boss battler where one to four players are going to take on bosses from the Boruto franchise. So each player is going to have a hand of seven different cards, two from a senior ninja and five from a junior ninja. Combinations that you can create from the various senior and junior ninjas are pretty crazy. They have vastly different skills and abilities, and you can build some uh, some pretty unique decks that way. For some of the smaller characters that maybe didn't warrant a deck of their own, uh, we created an ally deck. So we made uh, ally cards for each of these characters. There's a whole bunch of different allies in the game, and uh, each game you're going to choose three different allies, and they just give... Uh, a one-time use boost or perk to the ninjas to kind of help them with their mission. So all your actions are going to come from the cards in your hand. Each card costs uh, some amount of chakra and chakra uh, is built up over the course of the game uh, cooperatively. So anytime you use a card, you leave it in front of you and it becomes uh, chakra of a certain color. Then other players or you can, can spend that card to do more powerful attacks. So over the course of the game, you build up these cooperative combos and you really start to feel like a team of ninjas who are working together. So there are five different villains in this game and each villain plays completely differently. So the strategies that players are gonna have to use to defeat them is gonna change from game to game. For example, there's one villain, uh, Shin Uchiha, for fans of the show. Um, he has a whole bunch of clones that pop up all over the board and players are gonna have to work really hard to keep these clones at bay while also stopping uh, Shin Uchiha from doing what he wants to do and, and defeating him, ultimately. So you definitely don't need to, you know, know everything about Naruto to play the game. It's just a fun game, really. Um, if you like uh, co-op games, if you like uh, crisis management type games, uh, you're going to like this one. As I mentioned before, I'm a really big fan of this franchise and I wanted to do it justice. I wanted to create a really good game. That, uh, that other fans of this franchise could love. And, and in doing that, I think we, we made a really great game here that can be played by anybody. It's really accessible, um, but there's also a lot of deep strategy there. There's hand management, there's resource management, and, and not even just resource management for yourself, but there's like collaborative, collective resource management. Um, so it's a fairly accessible yet deep game that I think pretty much anyone who's a fan of cooperative games can enjoy. <laughs> Excellent, thanks guys. All of you out there, if you are excited about Boruto, Naruto Next Generation is the board game, make sure to head to blacklistgamesllc.com or follow us on social media. You can find all our channels on that website. You'll be able to sign up for updates regarding Boruto and all our other exciting upcoming projects. So, until next time, I'm Scotty. Keep playing those Blacklist games. Always great to see another co-op project coming out. That's always well, something that gets are my be interest. Hugely excited about this. They all, watched are they all, fans of the anime? All six hundred episodes. Oh, there's a lot of episodes. They binge through that. I watched some of them. <laughs> I gotta get. I I, okay. I heard it's really good. So it's at some point. Cool, all cool. right. Well, that's cool. Let's now jump to our good friend Justin Jacobson from Restoration Games. Hi there. This is Justin Jacobson. 
I'm the president of Restoration Games, and we're extremely excited to be part of the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular this year. Restoration Games, we take old games that have been out of print for some time, modernize them, and bring them back for today's gamer. And one of the things we want to do for this Summer Spectacular is give you a first look at a game that we have coming out this summer, and it's a game that some of you might know pretty well already, and that's Unmatched. It's our latest set that we have coming out called Battle of Legends Volume 2. So for those of you who uh, are familiar with us, follow us on social, you might have seen we already leaked one of the uh, revealed, one of the heroes coming out in the set, Yananga. And then uh, we also have the three other heroes that we want to reveal for you now are Achilles, Sir Wukong, and Bloody Mary. And those are the four heroes that will be appearing in the Battle of Legends Volume 2 set. Let's take a closer look at each of those heroes, and more importantly, let's look at some of the amazing art by the artist we have for this set, Zoe Van Dyke. So the first hero that we already revealed on social is Yenenga, the famed warrior prince, a princess of Burkina Faso. Uh, she strategically uses her warrior sidekicks to get the most out of the battlefield and doing damage from afar, and she can be very challenging when she gets all of her warriors out uh, putting the pressure on. The next hero that we have is Sir Wukong. He's the Monkey King, a uh, very famous uh, figure from uh, Chinese myth and legend. And he uses tricks and deception, um, very sneaky cards, uh, lots of tricky things that he's doing. Uh, makes for a fun play experience to play uh, with and play against. And next we have Achilles. He's one of the greatest warriors of Greek mythology. Uh, he has the, his uh, sidekick, his uh, beloved uh, companion Patroclus by his side uh, as his sidekick and together they make a very formidable team and then uh, if Patroclus is defeated he becomes even stronger and enraged uh, by the loss. And then finally we have Bloody Mary who's one of the most terrifying heroes that we've ever had in the set uh, and the art uh, definitely does that justice. She's a malevolent spirit who seems to be everywhere at once, uh, attacking from all sides, and um, can be very, uh, very scary to play against in that regard as well. So we hope you enjoyed this first look, and we wanted to uh, uh, thank you all for all the support that you've given Unmatched since we've released it. It's been a very popular game for us, and uh, the, the uh, excitement that we get from the fans has been really energizing for us. We love working on this, and we will continue to do so. So this new Unmatched set, Battle of Legends Volume 2, will be available in stores later this year. And we want to thank you and enjoy the rest of the Summer Spectacular. I claim Monkey King. You, <laughs> you, you already can't. claimed I it? I claim Monkey King. You can't. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you've... that's a great bunch of new characters. More Unmatched is always welcome. There's a lot table. of Unmatched at this point. It's exciting because whenever these games come out, I'm always a little cautious. Like, oh, that's cool, but will there be more? Because oh, there will be more. Hasbro has ruined us in that regard. They come out with a game, and then yeah, there's not yeah. more stuff. Monkey King. Nice to see it still being supported and more stuff coming. And... Next up is Cardboard Alchemy. Woohoo! Forget what you know about dragons. Once destroyers of town, fire-breathing beasts of dread. Now you see, they bake the most magical bread. Flamecraft, coming to Kickstarter in one month. That's right, set your calendar for August 10th. You don't want to miss this one. From Cardboard Alchemy. In Flamecraft, players compete to enchant the town in this dragon placement game with shared engine building for two to five players. Designed by Manny Vega and art by world-renowned dragon illustrator Sandara Tang. Years ago, ancient wizards bred these tinier artisan dragons, our friends, who just happen to make a wicked cup of joe or the most magically tasting cut of steak you've ever had on the grill. And you are a flame crafter, someone who speaks dragon, of course, and you're going to help these dragons find their perfect home among the shops of town. Whether it's at the forge, the corner potion shop, your local butcher, or the bazaar. 
Dragons will begin to activate their special powers and combo in unique ways. You can enchant shops to increase their power, and you can find hidden secret goals. The flame crafter that earns the most reputation in town will be the winner. You can win a dragon mini right now. Every two weeks, we are releasing a pre-launch puzzle designed by Richard Molina Weber, and each one related to one of the dragon classes in the game. So you can learn about the game and win a mini. In addition, if you solve all the puzzles, you can win an all-in pledge. And finally, we have a special shop to share with you, the Spice Tower. If you join us on this campaign, you can help us unlock and bring Tom Vassal and the Dice Tower, aka the Spice Tower, to Flamecraft. We hope to see you there. Thanks so much for checking it out. I want to get a puzzle of that final picture. I am jealous that you get to hang out with the adorable cooking dragons. Amazing artwork. Okay, so Peter won't say this, but uh, Peter, the one who was just talking, he was the driving force behind Dwellings of Elder Vale. Hmm. So if you put that into this, whoo, hoo, hoo, hoo. I have forgotten everything I know about dragons. Well, they make food, and that's what matters. Yes. So. Alrighty. Well, this next one I know people will be, well, they have guessed this one, I think, but let's jump to the makers of one of the most popular games from last year, CG. Oh, hi. I'm Nathan Minier, North American Marketing for Czech Games Edition. You might have already heard, but this summer we're going to be relaunching our classic hit, Galaxy Trucker, which features all new artwork, nicer components, streamlined gameplay, and even a few other cool updates. Now, one thing we've been doing this past year, and with many of our other games like Sanctum, Lost Ruins of Arnak, and Adrenaline, is releasing free digital mini expansions for fans to download and enjoy. And as part of the relaunch of Galaxy Trucker, we're also going to be updating and re-releasing the Rough Roads mini expansion and making it downloadable for free when the new edition launches. If you're not familiar with Rough Roads, it offers a unique set of cards that delivers a steeper challenge for more experienced players. They add special hazards and wild crazy obstacles into the mix to make your galactic trek even more thrilling and unpredictable, and explosive, and fiery, and chaotic, and all that good stuff. So we hope you'll check out the upcoming relaunch of Galaxy Trucker, and also download the free Rough Roads mini expansion when it's available later this summer. Thanks so much, and keep on trucking. Man, I, I, Galaxy Trucker we have in the library here. Yeah. I have the, they have the expansions. Yes, if you thought it was an easy game, which I don't. It, it's not, <laughs> no. But it's nice to see uh, it, it getting some more love and uh, sort of a refresh. Yeah, and the refresh was and, really important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, we have Portal Games. Woohoo! Hello, hello. This is Ignacio Portal Games, uh, and this is Dice Tower Spectacular. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I hope you have a great time during this event. Uh, I said, my name is Ignacy Chewczyk. I designed the game Robinson Crusoe. So if you ever played Robinson Crusoe and you died miserably, enjoy. You're welcome. That's me. And in this today video, I want to present you two games that we are going to uh, release very, very soon. Both of them were already announced in January during the PortalCon, but now I can finally share more details about them. So the first one will be Million Dollar Script. The second one will be Dune House Secrets. Million Dollar Script. Finally, we have a copy. I can show the box. I can show you the compass and tell you about this game. This is a party game. As you can see, the box size, uh, like code names, like the crypto, like many of these uh, party games. And this one is that you are playing in the teams. And the theme is you are coming with a script for the amazing, amazing uh, movie. The designer of this game, uh, Daniel Stamm, is a, a real-life director. You can uh, Google him and see what movies he directed. Mm, and he came up with this amazing uh, storytelling uh, uh, party game in which you are going, as I said, create a scenario for the, uh, for the movie. Uh, both teams, both teams are split, uh, and they have their task, and there's one person, the producer, who will judge this, all this sales pitch and will choose the best, uh, the funnest, the most interesting uh, pitch for the game. The game is divided into five, uh, five rounds. In each round, players are coming with the different tasks. They have to create the hero, they have to create the villain, they have to create the plot twist and other, other things. And uh, producers, they have their secret personality. So there are things that they love, like Martians, or like drama, or like Westerns. And there are things that they hate, like, for example, I don't know, karate or whatever else. So when you pitch the idea for the script, the person who is playing the director, the producer, 
will have their opinion on the ideas that you came uh, with. N uh, when you play in a team of the people who are coming with their script, you will have your own role when you are going to do a pitch, which is very, very fun. So each of the players have their role. It may be like main narrator, it may be sound effects. If you like beatboxing, this is the role for you. Musical score and, of course, the lines of dialogue. So lots of fun for all to be engaged and having fun during the sales pitch, during the pitch for the, uh, for the script. A million Dollar Script is uh, releasing this Gen Con. So very, very soon, and as we call it during the PortalCon, the announcement is the game we call COVID Go Home. This is the part again where you can finally meet with your friends, uh, six people, eight people, ten people, um, divided into two groups, and just silly fun coming up with the ideas, brainstorming. Uh, I can show you how the creation of the hero, for example, for the first round of the game, we have to come up with the hero to come up with a villain and decide how they work. You will just draw, uh, row, draw, draw the cards, you draw one card, a second card, and third card. And on these cards, you have a ton of different uh, ideas for the characters. So this one will be a claustrophobic FBI agent who was caught in an embarrassing act. So this is the start. This is our hero, claustrophobic FBI agent who was caught in the embarrassing act. And this is the, something that the producer gives to the players, and he would also draw cards for the villain. So let me check what villain we have in this very game. A colorblind zombie master who is consumed with the completing a unique collection, whatever it makes. So this is the pitch that producer gives to the players, and now they have a couple of minutes to come up with the idea what this hero and this villain have together and what they are coming for. This is Million Dollar Script, silly, funny party game, COVID go home, we want to meet, we want to play the conventions, we want to have just fun. Did I mention that this hourglass has a blue sand? How fancy is that, right? Take care, thank you. <clears throat> and I'm back, and this is the second game that we are going to announce. As I said, we already announced it at the PortalCon in January, but now we can share more and more details, finally, because the release is very, very soon, so the next game I want to talk about is a Dune House Secrets is a one to four player uh, players cooperative game adventure game in which you as a player are joining the resistance against the Harkonnen the house of the Harkonnen the plot uh, written by Przemysław Rimmer the same person who wrote the plot for the base game of detective and in this adventure game uh, we are inviting you to go to Arrakis and take part in these amazing events uh, that are described in the novel Dune and described in the movie Dune that is upcoming uh, this fall season. So you, as a player, will be on Arrakis uh, uh, as a part of the rebellion about, against uh, Harkonnen. It's a great, uh, great time. Uh, the game comes with three chapters uh, and the prologue. So because we are aware that not all of you read the novel, not all of the players will uh, see the movie. We have the prologue, the about the one hour smaller adventure, shorter adventure that mm, shows you the world, shows you the characters, shows you the basic mechanics of the game. And then when you finish the prologue, when you understand what's going on here on the Iraqis, then you have three full blown amazing uh, adventures, uh, very different from the base games of Detective because now you are not investigator. You are acting like an adventure game as a Rebel against the House of Har Harkonnen. As I mentioned, the game is releasing in Essen this year. And the most important for you information uh, for this month, on July 12th, we are starting pre-order. So check out uh, our offer at dune.portalgames.pl because during this pre-order you will learn much more about the game. We are going to share a lot of uh, articles about the game, a lot of materials about the, uh, the story. And what is more, in this pre-order campaign, we have a ton of goodies for you, as with any pre-order from Portal Games, as you remember our uh, previous pre-order campaigns for 51st State, for Vienna Connection this time as well. Our production team prepared the unique goodies, unique bonuses, unique promos that will be available only through this pre-order campaign. So yes, this is a Dune House secret. Invite your friends uh, and uh, go to Arrakis to have amazing many adventures, three chapters and a prologue uh, during the events and uh, describe you the book. You will have a great time if you like adventure games. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for uh, for having a chance to speak to you. Have a great, great event, and see you at the conventions, either Gen Con or Essen. The spice must flow. Indeed, but I'm excited about the the script writing or the script pitching game. Uh, my my brother went to school for screenwriting, and so I, I know what I'm getting him for Christmas this year. Oh, that is a good idea. Yeah, but I want to watch the Dune movie and then play the game. There you go. I'll be. I'm watching the movie for. Maybe there are clues. No, I'm watching the movie for uh, to to learn 
Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. for, for you research purposes. If you're going to solve these purposes. mysteries, you have to you have to watch the movie. Like halfway through, be like, all right, let's watch the movie that's again. <laughs> let's go. We watch the movie. Like, the all right, now let's go back and finish the game. Okay, well, let's jump to a, a company whose name is very different than the things they make. Horrible Guild. Oh, hey there. We didn't notice you were already there. Hi, everyone. Uh, since you're here, we could tell you about our new project. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a game really focused on a map and player will take control of different regions and will manage them. Yeah, and there will be several resources to gather with different users. Players will be able to exchange them, uh, construct buildings, and personal improvements. We will have the voting and the tough decisions, but we will have more than just trucks going up and down this yeah. time. And the cards will have more varied effects, having an impact on specific regions. And wait for it, the game will have a box too. Wow. Yeah. And could it be something like this? excited king's dilemma is one of my favorite legacy games okay I, i'm excited i love that reveal that was great i i didn't know where they were headed not but king's dilemma too queen's dilemma yeah yeah but have you, you have not played king's dilemma. i have not played that one no you have to get around to it I, yeah. I do very excited very excited next up for our announcement spectacular is north star games hi everyone my name is ross i am the marketing and community manager for north star games and joining me today is Ben, who wears a lot of hats at North Star, uh, but joining me specifically to talk about our next game, which is called Paint the Roses. Paint the Roses, it's a cooperative deduction-based puzzle game set in the whimsical world of Wonderland. You are some gardeners in Wonderland, and you're trying to plant a beautiful garden, and uh, if you finish the garden, you win. It's that simple. All right, so we're a bunch of gardeners, yeah. We're filling in a garden to, to completion. Yep. And we're working together. Sound sounds pretty sounds pretty nice so far. What's, yeah, it's great. What's the catch? Well, so the, the, the catch is is your employer. Uh you're working for the Queen of Hearts. And she's a little ruthless. Uh she's a little tough to work under. She she wants an execution more than she wants a, a beautiful garden. And so she is being quite secretive with telling each individual gardener how she wants it planted. So everyone's getting a little piece of the puzzle, but no one has the whole picture. So you are trying to figure out what she wants as you're planting the garden and secretly communicating that to the other gardeners without her noticing. Basically, I'm going to have a whim. You're going to have a whim. Other players at the table are going to have a whim. We're going to be working together to help each other work out what our whim is. Uh, yep. We can't openly communicate what we have, so there's a little bit of hidden information, but we are, again, working together yeah, to fact, try and do that. Yeah, the, the, primary, the, the primary way that you communicate is through planting uh, shrubs in the garden. So you're going to be trying to signal how what you know the queen wants through how you plant in the garden, and maybe also try and um, fish a little bit for what other people want. So although we can't discuss what's on our own whim cards, we can openly discuss at the table what we think is on the other players' whim cards. Part of, part of how I got it so everyone has to be involved is by everyone having a secret. So even if someone is trying to quarterback a game, they do have to shut up some of the time when everyone else is trying to figure out what they've got. And then also, her whims are constantly changing. There's never a single point in time where you're like, we've got it figured out, that's it, it's done. Apart from if you make it all the way to the end, of course, yeah. and win the game. Yeah, if you make it to the end, she has to begrudgingly accept that you've done the job, <laughs> and she'll have to go find some other folks to maybe execute. The queen um, has basically an adaptive speed at which she'll chase. Uh, the faster the players are going, 
the faster she'll go to try and catch you. So no matter if it's an inexperienced group just playing for the first time or a group that has played hundreds of times, those last few turns will always have the tension of the queen breathing down your neck. So for anyone interested, do go to northstargames.com, sign up to our newsletter, follow us on Twitter, North Star Games, follow us on Instagram under North Star Games. But I must also mention that we do actually have a new digital release coming out. The Evolution Climate digital game will be launching on Steam and Switch on the 14th of July. So if you like your physical board games and you like your digital board games, we've got you covered. So go check that out too. Neat theme, and uh, I think, I want to say, this is the first time you've seen miniatures from North Star Games. I think so. I was thinking more along the lines of, if anyone ever complains about me as a boss, I'll be like, <laughs> you, it could be worse. I'm not the Queen of Hearts. Look at, well, someone's going to take that copy of the game and just put the Queen of Hearts mini right in front of, right in front of your desk. <laughs> All righty. Well, that is certainly a different kind of game for North Star Games that we have not seen before. I'm looking forward to that. Let's jump now to a quick announcement from WizKids. Hi, I'm Jessa from WizKids, host of our weekly board game streaming show, Much Ado About Gaming. And I am excited to announce that this fall, WizKids is releasing Detective Rummy, a spiritual successor and evolution of the classic Mystery Rummy series from designer Mike Fitzgerald. Detective Rummy features seven exciting new cases that can be played as a campaign or as one-shot experiences. Keep an eye on WizKids' social media for the most up-to-date information, and be sure to pre-order Detective Rummy at your friendly local game store or online today. I knew about this. Mike has been working on this for a while. I, I, oh, cool. I've enjoyed the different mystery rummies. Well, sure. They used to be just individual things. This is sort of an evolution of the concept. It's it's nice to see see the uh, it's nice to see, nice to see Mike designing, and it's nice to see uh, new projects from it. Yeah, if you've never played, uh, if you like rummy, but you never played one of the mystery rummies, you really should give it a whirl. It takes rummy to a whole new. Uh, that, I'm not even gonna say that whole new level thing. All right, <laughs> but anyhow, let's move on to the latest from our friends at Pandasaurus Games. Hey everybody, I'm Molly Wardlaw. And I'm Nathan McNair. We are the owners of Panasaurus Games, and today we are incredibly excited to make a huge announcement. This is involving one of our best-selling games of all times, a little game that is termed so many people, has sold hundreds of thousands of units worldwide. We are going back to the little Japanese town of Machikoro. It's Machikoro too. So Machikoro 2 is a standalone sequel uh, to Machikoro, so you don't need to own the base game, but you should, uh, in order to play this one. Um, it's sort of Machikoro for people who are looking for a little bit more out of the game. Um, so it does a couple of things. Um, if you've played Machikoro, there's now two decks of cards that go from 1 to 6 and 7 to 12, so you're always going to have different numbers available to uh, look at and roll. There are all new cards in it, and the biggest change, if you're familiar with Machu Koro, you roll dice, if the die roll that you roll is on the top of a card you own, it activates a card, it usually gives you money or steals money from somebody else or does something special. And what you're trying to do is build your four establishments before other players to win. What's really neat about this game is there are now a bunch of unique landmark cards which you're trying to build. So normally everyone has the same four to start the game. Here, there's just a bunch of different ones, and the cost is dependent on the number you build. So if it's the first one you're building, you'll pick 12. If it's the second you build, 16, and then 22. And every single player is going to have unique landmarks throughout the game, meaning players are going to have unique abilities that no one else has, but it's a race to build these. So these are going to be out in the market just like your establishment cards, so when you see one you like, it's kind of a race to go get it. Um, really fun game, all unique abilities, still you know, plays in the same time frame that the Machi Koro you know and love is, two to four players. Yeah, and similar to the Machi Koro 5th Anniversary Edition we made, we've got the fun little plastic molded coins and our big oversized chunky dice. Yeah, so but... 20, 20 millimeter dice, so a little bit bigger than you're used to as I drop them. <laughs> so, as uh, the last note, we are excited to offer three unique landmark 
cards that have uh, could not be found anywhere else if you will order direct from Pandasaurus Games. Yeah, and uh, the plan here is that this game is going to be out later this year. Um, we're hoping to have it at Essen and have it for this holiday, but you know, with everything going on in the shipping, TBD, but we think uh, very confident that we'll have this game at Essen. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We're so excited to bring Machi Koro back. Thanks, guys. Nice to see more coming from Machi Koro, a, a new distillation, a, a new version of the universe, new I like mechanisms. The, I like having different buildings than everybody else. Did that one card say, you win? I, it, I missed it. I didn't see that. I thought, if there's a you win card, I'm in. Okay. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Those cards are almost always impossible to do, and yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish one of them. It's, it's possible, but I like the control of being able to pick from different piles, and yeah, very, very cool. All right, our next announcement is from Kids Table Board Games. I want this game because I like all their productions. Oh, uh, yeah, and, and I mean, there's not a lot of information there, so I can just sort of speculate of what it's going to be. It's, feed you know, me Seymour. Feed me. It's going to be a musical game <laughs> about running a flower shop in New York. We no, it, it's, uh, it, it, you know, Power Plant sounds like it's engine building game with plants. That sounds, I don't know what it is. I'm in. It's very, very neat. You know, if you told me the name Power Plant, I'd be like, eh, because I would think it was about electricity. Yeah. So, I like that cover. They do the best art, for sure. Or some yeah, of the who best knows? Uh, Pegasus Spiele is our next announcement in our Spectacular. Hi everyone, I'm Julia from Pegasus Spiele. We are happy to be able to be here at the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular to announce three exciting new titles coming later this year and in early 2022. Follow us on our Pegasus Spiele Global Facebook page to get up-to-date information on these and other upcoming games. Pegasus Spiele has partnered with Feuerland Spiele to bring you Fire and Stone by game designer Klaus-Jürgen Friede, the creator of Carcassonne. Start with the very origin of humankind and colonize the world by hunting, gathering and exchanging resources. In Fire and Stone, each player controls a tribe of prehistoric humans moving out of Africa and creating settlements as they expand across the globe. Each turn, players must explore their surroundings, revealing and resolving randomly distributed location tiles with the goal of gaining new skills and establishing settlements through three distinct regions. This 2-4 player game for ages 10 and up pulls together familiar worker placement and resource management mechanics with randomized map exploration, offering classic fun with a high degree of replayability and adding additional strategy through the use of secret goals. Use shrewd business sense, smart investing, and strategic generosity to build the most prestigious company in Carnegie. Originally released as a Kickstarter from Quinnet Games, Pegasus Spiele is proud to be bringing this game to retail soon as part of our catalog. Inspired by the life of renowned American steel magnate and philanthropist Andrew Carnegie, this beautifully illustrated strategy game sets players on the cusp of the Industrial Revolution. It creates increasingly complex challenges as players work to successfully manage the various daily operations of a rapidly growing business, all while rubbing elbows with important personalities of the era 
and making charitable contributions for the benefit of their nation. Carnegie is a wonderfully complex heavyweight Euro game for 1 to 4 players ages 12 and up. Bonfire, the story continues. The first expansion, Trees and Creatures, adds three modular expansions that can be combined with one another. Ancient trees, creatures and events. Also included are new rules and game material for fifth player. The Ancient Tree expansion gives you more bonuses and a new way to score at the end of the game. Creature cards are drafted at the beginning of the game and unlock a unique ability for your play. Placing a new fate tile will now change everything. With each new fate tile, a new event card is drawn that changes a certain rule and affects all players. Spark new interest in the bonfire experience with trees and creatures. Thank you for joining us for these exclusive announcements. Other new releases for 2021 also include My Farm Shop, Micro Macro Crime City 2 Full House and Port Royal Big Box. Look for news about these games and more on our Facebook page, YouTube channel and our website pegasus-web.com. From all of us here at Pegasus Spiele, we hope you have a great time at the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular and happy gaming! Pegasus Spiele. Wir machen Spaß. www.pegasus.de Okay, so all those announcements and then she's like, Micro Macro 2, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's excited about different things. Some people are excited about the bonfire expansion, and some people are really excited about the cat in the in the behind of the of the video. Yes. Um, let's go back to the games, though. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I I'm I'm, I'm very interested to see this stuff. I want to see Carnegie. Yeah. You know. See, I, you know, a wider release of Carnegie and um, and uh, Klaus Jürgen Verda with a, a new game. That's that's really yeah. Cool too. Yeah. He does not do. He's not as prolific as say Knizia, but I mean Carcassonne. Probably keep, eats up a lot of his time. Yes, yes. All right, let's go to our friends now. And you've seen him on many of our shows themselves. Robert from Arcane Wonders. Hey, folks. Robert here to talk about what's new and upcoming from Arcane Wonders. So let's dive right in. First off, we have two expansions for two Dice Tower Essentials games that will be available in limited quantity at Gen Con and Origins. First off, we have the one I'm most personally excited for, the third expansion for Onitama, Light and Shadow. This expansion offers a new way to play Onitama, introducing a new type of pawn, the ninja. The ninja moves secretly, hidden from your opponent until they're ready to strike. The game includes two ninja pawns, two folding screens, two neoprene ninja boards, and four lanterns. Two modes of play are offered in this expansion, shadow and light. In shadow, each player controls a secret ninja from the shadows, while light mode creates a new asymmetrical Onitama experience, allowing one player to use both ninjas and the other player to use the traditional master and students. While the lanterns allow you to illuminate the shadows in a row or column in order to try and reveal information about where your opponent's ninjas may be hiding. Next up is the expansion for Viral, called The Hive, and this expansion adds five new asymmetric and thematic factions to the game. Each player will now start with a hive within the body. The hive will be used to unlock new faction abilities for your virus, allowing you to develop special traits unlike any seen before. Next, we have a new version of Air Land and Sea, which we will also have limited copies of at Gen Con and Origins. You spoke, we listened. We heard from lots of fans that you wanted a more colorful and differently themed version of Air Land and Sea. So with that, we present ALS Critters at War. We've taken everything you love about Air Land at Sea and brought some critters to the party. This is the same game as base ALS, just with a more colorful look, reminiscent of Saturday morning cartoons. All right, so let's talk about some new games. Initially released in Germany as Dare Perfect Moment, we're excited to bring this game to the Arcane Wonders line with an English release as Picture Perfect this fall. In Picture Perfect, there are 14 characters who are all getting ready to be in the perfect photograph, and you're the photographer. However, each character has three specific desires that they want you to fulfill when you take that photo. Over the course of six rounds, players try to take a peek inside the envelope, randomly set up the start of the game to find out the desires, arranging and rearranging guests in their hidden play area. You can trade information with other players or try to keep that information yourself as events are triggered throughout the game. At the end, each player uses their cell phone to take a picture of that final scene, lining up the perfect shot. Finally, all the desires of the guests are revealed and scored. The photographer who took the perfect picture according to the guest wins. There's an advanced mode that allows for auctioning and trading of table decorations for even more scoring and information gathering opportunities. 
Next up, and slated to be available at Essen potentially this year, is Mortem, a cooperative deduction storytelling adventure taking place in a grim world shaped in the image of medieval Europe. Now, with all of the legends and superstitions and fears coming to life, players take on the roles of secret organization detectives investigating mysterious events. The base game contains three scenarios, each part of a single storyline. Now, this is a card-driven adventure, but as you explore the world, more options open up so that you're free to explore the world of Mortem any way you like. We're releasing more information about Mortem over the next month. Finally, we wanted to give you a sneak peek at a further out game that we just couldn't wait to share with you. Ley Lines, designed by Wolfgang Kramer and Daryl Andrews. Players are denizens of an enchanted forest who's li who live by following the ley lines, magical paths that weave between the trees and lead travelers to the forest bounty full of resources. Players will need to strategically navigate the winding ley lines, gather resources from the forest, and deliver them to the woodland markets in exchange for upgrades and victory points. Based on the award-winning Off Oscape by Wolfgang Kramer and lovingly restored by Daryl Andrews and Arcane Wonders. Finally, a little teaser on the horizon. I see we may be getting some more Aquatica and Smartphone Inc. in the future. All right, take care, folks. Well, I'm intrigued. <laughs> um, you should have seen Eric's face during that picture game thing. Oh, yeah, well, so first Picture Perfect looks really cool. I mean, especially with the, the acrylic, uh, the, the see-through pictures, but arranging things and then taking a physical picture of it in a physical form, that sounds fascinating. But Alf Oxa is one of my favorite pickup and deliver games. And to see that in a re reskinned form, uh, you know, redone form, that's fantastic too. Really, really cool. Obviously, I'm very biased here with the Dice Tower Essentials stuff, but I'm very happy to see Viral get an expansion. If you never yep. played Viral, check it out. And then another expansion for Onitama. Onitama with the secret boards? Oh, boy. Ninjas! Huh? Okay, I'm, I'm telling excited. you, great slate. Again, very biased there, but very, very happy about all that. Yes. We have one announcement left. One more to go. Our friends at Direwolf Digital. Hey everyone, I'm Paul. As you might be able to guess from its prominent position on the game pyramid behind us, Justin and I are here to talk about Dune Imperium. It's been an amazing six months since we released the game, and it's been really fun to see a new generation of Dune fans coming to the table. On behalf of the entire team here at Direwolf, Justin and I want to thank everyone who has supported the game. In particular, Legendary Entertainment and the Herbert Estate have been incredibly supportive. This has allowed us to design a game inspired not just by the upcoming movie, but also the larger literary universe. For example, the Technocratic Society of Ix. First mentioned in the original novel, Ix played a significant role in later stories. And on that note, we're excited to announce the first expansion, Dune Imperium Rise of Ix. Our first goal was for the new mechanics to resonate with the portrayal of Ix from the novels. Ix is well known throughout the Dune universe for their cutting edge technology. Ixian non-thinking machines are so advanced, in fact, that some say they cross moral lines. But so useful that many look the other way. From a gameplay perspective, we knew we wanted to offer players additional ways to spend resources, expanding replayability. Ix represented the perfect thematic foundation for creating those strategic opportunities. Rise of Ix has a ton of new content, including new Imperium, Intrigue and Conflict cards. It also introduces six new leaders across three of the great houses of the Landsrad. Justin, can we hear about one of these new leaders? We know some players wanted deck sculpting to be a larger part of their strategy. Enter Archduke Armand of House Akaz. His coordination ability gives him the potential to trash a card every single round. Together with his Signet, which acquires cards from the Imperium Row, no leader will give you more control over the contents of your deck. While Armand offers a cool strategy based on existing mechanics, we've also got something entirely new to show you. Rise of Ix features a new type of combat unit, the Mighty Dreadnought. These war machines enter the conflict like troops, but they pack even more firepower. They can temporarily take control of locations on Arrakis, and the best part, they're indestructible. But all this power comes at a price in Solari, this can make you question how quickly you want to get a high council seat or hire a sword master. This goes back to what you were saying about more ways to spend resources. Exactly right, Paul. But we didn't stop there. Rise of X introduces an entirely new component that can be acquired for spice. 
Ixian technology tiles. Unlike cards, these don't shuffle into your deck. Instead, you simply place them in front of you where they provide a permanent upgrade to your abilities. Spicy. Let's take a look at a leader who ties these two mechanics together. Prince Romber of House Vernius controls the Ix Fief. As such, he's well suited to engage with some of their new mechanics. For example, he's able to build a superior class of Dreadnought, making him a potent threat in conflicts on the surface of Arrakis. He can also take advantage of special discounts on Ixian tech through his Signet ability. Intrigue cards get some new twists and turns in Rise of Ix. And here are a couple more new cards we'd like to share. That's just a taste of the new content in Rise of Ix. We'll have more to share in the coming weeks. The expansion will be available in friendly local game stores for the holidays. But before then, we have the Deluxe Upgrade Pack on the way. Here's a close-up. COVID certainly introduced some logistical challenges for us and everyone, but we're happy to say that the Upgrade Packs will start shipping by late August. As many of you know, we have companion app support for the game, which includes a variant called Arakeen Scouts. We've just released another new mode in the app called Dune Imperium Blitz. Blitz introduces a new challenge for veteran players, including a start-of-game draft and app-assisted political scheming. Download the Direwolf Game Room app on Steam or mobile to check it out. A big thank you again to everyone who supported the game. We hope you're enjoying the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular, and we appreciate the opportunity to participate in it. We're excited to keep the spice flowing with more Dune Imperium in the coming years. Finally, before we go, we want to leave you with a sneak peek at another new board game that's on the way from Direwolf. I just want to say that name, Wild Town West. Was that the dire wolf in that shot, in that last shot? Oh, I did not even notice. It was a western dire wolf. I'll tell you, I mean, obviously I'm excited about Dune and Imperium, and uh, we, during that thing, discussed the fact that Eric has not played it, and then no. we, will, we will fix that situation. Yeah, Tom and Roy are, are planning to fix that. <laughs> he must play. Town. The spice must, I don't know. Yes. Must be played. <laughs> All right, thank you to all the publishers who sent that in. We're going to try to make this a staple of our Summer Spectacular. We'll do this each year. We might even do it for more Spectaculars and such, you know, in the autumn and winter. We'll see. Um, but I hope you enjoyed all those. We want to thank all the publishers who put in work. It's not easy to make videos and put them together, but we hope you all enjoyed that. So we're going to take a, a jump here. We're going to, we have a couple videos we're going to play, and then we're going to be back at noon. Um, Jumping down to Australia again with some videos from there. And then we'll be back here at 2 o'clock with crowd surfing with special guests. And then Wonderland's War at 3.30. So lots of stuff still coming from the summer. I almost said winter. It's still summer. Still summer. Summer spectacular. Thanks for watching, but stay tuned. Here's more. Arcane Wonders brings you four gardens. The newest game in the Dice Tower Essential line. Long ago, in a beautiful eastern kingdom, a queen and her people pleased their gods by building a mystical pagoda. The pagoda housed the four gods and towered strong over the magnificent kingdom. As time passed, the queen fell ill and she summoned her people to compete for her crown. The crown would be passed on to the person who could build the most pristine garden around the pagoda. The heir would be chosen by the four gods themselves. The game features unique gameplay, beautiful artwork, and a 3D pagoda. The goal of Four Gardens is to accumulate the most points by completing landscape cards and finishing sets. Each finished set creates a panoramic view of a garden. You can finish these panoramas by first laying groundwork cards, acquiring resources by turning the 3D pagoda, and allocating those resources to satisfy the requirements of each groundwork card. For more information, please visit us at arcanewonders.com.
Hello everyone, uh, happy Summer Spectacular, I hope you're enjoying the content and it's great to be a part of it this year. So um, what I'm going to do is I've been talking about board games on the Dice Tower for a while and especially I've been talking about games I haven't played or games that you know I've played maybe comparing digital versus physical. But uh, today what I'm going to do is just share my top 10-ish with you. Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm doing Dice Tower shenanigans. So yeah, I'm going to share my top 10, but it's not going to be necessarily my exact top 10 because I wanted to bring board games from different categories within this top 10, which is why it's more of an ish. Let's do it, shall we? And so typically for the Dice Tower top 10s, I'm going to sort of put one in here to capture a whole bunch of games and it's experiences but it's also puzzle games as well and for this i'm going to include the exit game so i absolutely love these exit games this is one of the newer jigsaw ones i haven't done it yet but uh, i did one already and it was just as much fun i love how there's so many things that are done with these exit games that are just fresh and new i know that some people feel they've seen things before and definitely you get used to looking how to uh, solve puzzles but i think nearly every single game there's always one solution which makes me go oh wow that's so cool and i just absolutely love that in terms of sheer you know in terms of experiences yeah the first few games of time stories or uh pandemic uh, legacy were amazing but these are much shorter experiences and yet i've probably got as many hours out of the exit games because there's so many of them as i have with say time stories my experiences are my puzzly games the exit games so what about quick sort of filler games, fairly short ones. What about Roll and Write? Well, here's a game that covers both of those, and that is Welcome To. I talked about it recently. I said that I'd been playing the digital version, and actually it was a game that I thought I would really enjoy in person. But yeah, Welcome To, it's a flip and write game. You're flipping over cards, and then you've got to write that number on your own particular tableau, and depending on how you do it, how you fill out your neighborhood, you can score points, and hopefully you win more. It's one of those games that you play Play. it's a solo game that you play together but there's something about the interaction of being able to look at what other people are doing which makes it more than just simply a solo game and so yeah it's uh, probably the newest game on my list most of them are I'll be honest most of the games on this list are classics that I've had for years but this one has just it's just leapt to the front I started playing it a few months ago and I'm just Oh, I'm just playing it so much. So yeah, for a, a flip and write game and a really short filler and happily, it doesn't matter whether it's two player or 100 players, uh, welcome to. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum rather than a quick filler game. Let's go to one which burns your brain. And this for me is role player. So this is the min maxer's dream, right? This is all about optimizing. So you pull dice from a bag as a group, you draft those dice, and then you've got to put them in your player area. And you're trying to put these different dice so that maybe you have a total of 13 in a particular row or 18 in another or maybe you want the colors to match because they're all different color dice it's such an amazing uh, game and the fact that it was the first from thunderworks as soon as i saw uh, tom vassal review it i was like this is a game that i've got to have it's it's absolutely a brain burner game it's not something that you can go into simply it doesn't take a massive amount of time to play um, but oh my word, you're you're thinking hard on this one. And so if you really want that min-max uh, optimization game, then this for me is, a, is the one. So I realized that I don't play many, what most people play, but, uh, uh, gateway games. And I, I love Carcassonne, I love Ticket to Ride, but I don't actually own them. The one game that I would try and get people to play that's fairly simple and fairly straightforward is Blue Moon City. I have the uh, original version. It's actually a Polish version because it was out of print for so long. And once I played it in a games cafe, it's like, I need this game in my life. And so I, I got a Polish version, but that's fine because the cards are all language independent. So you're moving your 
um, your players, your tokens around a board. You're trying to get them into different areas of the city to collect resources, and then you can flip those tiles over, and you're trying to beat the opponents. Um, it's a really, really good sort of fun game, uh, but it is really simple. It's really easy to teach. It's really easy to pick up, and I, I just really enjoy it. I think, I, I think I'm a little bit sad that the artwork is it's pretty artwork on the new version but i prefer the original artwork and i just think yeah i think that the original is a much better production but um yeah absolute classic game i love worker placement games i really do and i realize that i have more of them in my collection than any other type of game uh in fact i love them so much that i'm actually i've got two that i'm trying to develop myself because who doesn't want to make a board game right so yeah uh and if i'm looking back at what my favorite worker placement is i don't know whether this is necessarily my favorite worker placement though i think it is but it certainly has a huge part in my heart and that is lord of waterdeep so when I was first getting into board games, Lords of Waterdeep had just come out. I'm a big Forgotten Realms fan. I've got two bookcases full of Forgotten Realms books. And I'd played Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights. And so having this theme, it allowed me to... It, it, it gave me that link to the things I already knew. It's a great worker placement. You're placing your workers out to try and collect cubes. And then you're trying to complete uh, these adventures, I guess. I have the upgraded figures, the little meeples for the different types of worker. I definitely want to play it with Scandals of Skullport, the expansion. I think it's a brilliant and it added this thing called Corruption, which is just... It, it, brings in this extra factor to think about. I will say that it's also a game I've played with new players quite easily. The learning curve isn't too much uh, to bring in new players and so it's and for me it this was the gateway game for me. This is the one that brought me in. It just come out like I say when I got into board gaming again. Um, so I absolutely love this. Is it my absolute favourite worker placement? Is it the best one? I don't know. There's so many things that I love about Tolkien. I absolutely adore this worker placement game. It's got a big dial in the middle and you, the longer you leave your workers out, the different actions you can take or maybe the more resources you get. I love this game, but there's Lords of Waterdeep. Just, it has a place in my heart because it brought me into gaming. I haven't put any sort of social deduction games on here. I'm not really a big fan of party games. I don't mind them, but it, it's not really sort of what I choose to play. However, there is one game so that I absolutely love, and that is Room 25. So Room 25, if anyone's seen the horror film The Cube, where there's a load of people and they wake up and they're all in these different rooms, and the rooms move around, and so some of them have traps, some of them have clues, some of them have all this different thing. Um, it's a it's a it's a really cool horror film for me. I love it, and Room 25 completely gets takes that film source and turns it into a board game which is really exciting and you can play it cooperatively but i like it when you play it in semi-cooperative where there is a traitor and no one knows and maybe there's one traitor maybe there's two traitors maybe there's not actually a traitor but no one knows that and so everyone's suspicious i think once you've got that element of being you know like what are you doing what are you doing did you do this to this or are you just being selfish you know or was it just that you forgot i love the paranoia that it induces it's so much fun and um, i played this a few times with my board game group uh, i i remember one game in particular which i absolutely loved and Everyone knew that I was the traitor right from the start because I am terrible. I do not have a poker face. I was giggling, so everyone knew I was the traitor. I thought I was being, no, I didn't think I was being sneaky. I was trying to be, but I just no, I wasn't succeeding. And so basically I got killed off right at the beginning of the game. But you never actually reveal whether you, the, you were the traitor or not. And so I carried on and I was watching the game being played and I was just joining in and saying, oh, is that that? Is that that? And then I started sowing in little seeds of distrust, like, oh, that was weird. Why did you do that? Oh, why did you do that? Now, I probably, I don't know whether that's really fair to do, but it was really good fun. I just started sowing little seeds of distrust at everyone. And so everyone became really paranoid. And because it was, I'd been kicked out so early in the game, everyone forgot that I'd played.
And so they just started turning on each other and everyone was, uh, you know, trying to kill each other. Everyone was super suspicious of what was going on. It was just a paranoia extravaganza. It was absolutely fantastic. And what was hilarious is that I think that like one person or two people escaped and a whole bunch of people got left behind. No one trusted anyone. So basically they didn't really win the game. And as soon as they finished, as soon as they finished, they looked at me and were like, you were the traitor. But they just completely forgot. And it was amazing. It was, am oh, oh, that was puppet mastery at its best. That was one of my favorite gaming experiences ever. And it came from this game, Room 25. Fantastic. <sighs> And earlier we had a uh, Brain Burner game. I gave you Role Player as my Brain Burner game. Uh, but for really trying to work out puzzles, for really trying to figure out what's going on, then I love Alchemists. Alchemists is such an amazing game. Again, I love the artwork. I know that there are some that think that the fantasy uh, artwork and setting is sort of very generic but for me it's something that I love I'm a complete fantasy nerd so it brings me into games uh, more than other themes do especially real life themes uh, in Alchemist you're trying to collect resources and then you it was one of the first app driven games and you use the app to look at what happens when you combine these two ingredients that you have and then you use that to deduce what might be the constitution uh, elements of that particular uh, uh, material that you're working with. It's wonderful. It's, it's like I say, it's a real brain burnery game. Uh, I did actually manage to teach it to my mum and get my mum to play and my mum is really not a gamer. And she enjoyed it because she enjoys that figuring out puzzle aspect. Although I realise that there is quite a steep learning curve. There's a lot of different places on the board to do things. It's got an almost worker placement aspect. So it's a big teach, um, but it's such a great game. And the expansion, what I liked about the expansion to it was that it had like six mini expansions in it. And so, you know, maybe you can change the starting resources or you can change this or you can change that. I like expansions where it just sort of tweaks some of the things that you're doing and you can choose what you're putting in and pulling out. And so, uh, yeah, Alchemist with the expansion or without the expansion doesn't really matter. I don't see this game got in enough love and it is amazing. Now, what about big sprawling adventure? I love Dungeons and Dragons and so I like it when a game can sort of replicate that feeling but you don't need a dungeon master and also you can play it in one session even if it's a long session. So for me the closest board game I think to that Dungeons and Dragons feel is Legends of Andor. So I have all the expansions for this, the big box and the short box, uh, small boxes and I just love the way this works. I like the way that the enemies move and you move them around and I will say that it got sort of refined as the game went on because you sort of want to be able to kill all the monsters but with this you've got to sometimes choose to let some through because you're on a time limit as well. I love the fact that you're going out and exploring things. The original box had two different sides of the map and it came with I think th six different stories which sort of follow on from each other. Um, and then the next two big box expansions sort of continued that story, which is amazing. It is, it, it's, it is a big epic sprawling adventure game. There's no two ways about it. And I realise that again, this generic fantasy theme may put some people off, but for me, I think we've already uh, determined I'm a big old nerd for fantasy, so it works really well. Um, I am I'm really looking forward to the adventures of Robin Hood which is I think the same designer and it's got interesting aspects where you change the board up a little bit I think that's just being released I kind of want to go to the UK Board Games Expo to just to see it um, another one from Cosmo apparently I'm a big old Cosmo fangirl but there you go now if you want a shorter uh, adventure type game then um, I love Near and Far Near and Far is a wonderful adventure game but you know you're only talking an hour to two hours it's a lot quicker it's still got this lovely aspect where um when you are looking at what's happening next you go into a board and uh, into a, a book and so you know depending on what cards you played or where you are depends which pages and paragraphs you read 
This is a wonderful game. I think the only thing that stops this being on this list above uh, Legends of Andor, and Legends of Andor is much more sprawling, but I want a cooperative game. I like competitive games, but I think if this was cooperative, I'd prefer it so much more. And I realise this was a cooperative version. Uh, but this is where I think I should buy Sleeping Gods. I haven't been able to yet, but Sleeping Gods is Ryan Lockett. It's got the beautiful artwork. It's got the storybook. It's got the adventure. Um, uh, but it's also a cooperative game. And so I think as much as I love Near and Far, I think that if I play Sleeping Gods, I won't have any need for Near and Far anymore. But I'm curious. I guess I'll find out at some point soon. So if we're looking at sort of resource management and if we're looking at a deck builder game, then the go-to for me is a game called Seasons. Seasons is just such a great game. You're rolling dice, you're using, and then you're drafting that dice to get resources and you use them to buy cards. And with that, you're building basically your deck building, you're building an engine. And so you're hoping that you're going to be able to score more points than your opponents. It's such a wonderful game. I've had this for a long time. It's got really beautiful, big, chunky dice that I just really enjoy rolling, I'll be honest. it The artwork is gorgeous. It is absolutely stunning. It, for me, it's just absolutely beautiful to look at. Um, I will say that I've played it with four players and three players a number of times and I feel like it's really strongest at two, especially once those two people know what they're doing. It moves forward at quite a click, you know, I can play it in 40 minutes, whereas a, a four-player game, especially with uh, new players, it can take sort of way over two, as I found out at some uh, board game nights. But yeah, I really love this. Um, I will say this is where I'm doing some shenanigans and I'm trying to bring in an extra game. I think 51st State is probably another one of my deck building engine building, uh, engine building games, and I absolutely love this. And I think that, well, 51st State is in my top 10 games, but because I'm trying to go for one sort of engine building game. I, I went for Seasons over 51st State. It just has the edge, but um, in terms of pure top 10, then 51st State is definitely in there. So shenanigans, but this is my uh, second choice at this number. All right, so my number one game, my favorite number one game, what is it? So like with Lords, Lords of Waterdeep and Seasons, was one of the first games I got and another one of the first games I got was Mage Knight and I realized that with Waterdeep I had this sort of fairly easy gateway game and I also bought the opposite end of the spectrum with Mage Knight. I talk about big sprawling games with um, Legends of Andor, well Mage Knight is another one of those, you know, a game can easily take four uh, hours and it can pretty much be four hours per player to be perfectly honest. So this is a game that I usually play solo but I love it. What I really love is that you're building a deck and you're going out and you're exploring the countryside. The countryside reveals as you go along but I love the combat. So you're building a deck and then you have to use your cards for fight or blocking or for movement or whatever it is. And so there's a management aspect of the game there and you know you really want to sort of build a good deck but you can get away with some duds you know i mean it's if one bad choice ruined a four-hour game there'd be serious problems there and i just love the way it plays i love the way combat works out it's just so interesting to me yes there are so many rules it makes it really complicated i played it once with somebody else and it was an eight hour game and that's just not really practical for me this is a sort of solo experience pretty much um but i really enjoy it, it gives me that i uh, that feeling of going out and adventuring and trying to discover things and uh, there are campaign rules online which i've downloaded I maybe don't play it as much as I'd like because it, it does also take up a lot of space and so that can, you know, if you've got a small table then that can really limit whether you can play it or not. But 
It's not a game that I play that often, but when I do, I know that this is just going to be the most fun gaming I have. And so that's it. That's my top 10 with a few others snuck in there. Like I say, I tried to cover um, different types of game, not just... I didn't want to have too many similar games. And so I think that there's something about each of these games which makes it slightly unique. Most of them are quite old. I realise that there's some games on there I talked about. Sleeping Gods might take over from near and far. And uh, The Legend of Robin Hood, The Adventures of Robin Hood might take over from Legends of Andor. But I don't own any of the, either of those yet. Could be that this list is different in 12 months time. But uh, yeah, they're my top 10. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Maybe you found out about some new games or found out something about me. And until next time... Uh, Take care, enjoy the rest of your summer spectacular, and uh, go Dice Team! Well, hi everybody, I'm Doug Jr. And I'm Doug the Third. And we are with Doug and Doug Gaming. And today we're going to be participating in the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular by doing a playthrough of Elder Sign. I am going to be playing Kate Winthrop, who is a scientist. And during her turn, monsters cannot appear. And also she is immune to all the terror effects that may be on these cards here. Doug the third is playing. I'm Amanda Sharp, or Sharpay to her friends, and uh, I'm the student. I guess it says, uh, during her turn, Amanda may complete any task, or excuse me, any number of tasks per roll instead of only one. And if I seem a little hesitant, it's because I've played this game once. Yeah, and I'll refresh your memory if I need to. Uh, We are going to start by doing a mythos effect, which nobody likes. Oh, I should also mention, we'll do that in a moment. That we are, uh, I I drew this one as a Thoth. Absolute destruction. And it's going to take us 14 Elder Signs to defeat as a Thoth. It sounds like a lot. A lot of Elder Signs. Well, it's a good amount. But he, but the one thing too is that if he does awaken, normally you have a uh, chance to fight the, uh, the monster. Mm-hmm. Um, but if he awakens, we're done. We lo- we lose. There there is no fighting him. So okay, you know. But yes, we need fourteen elder signs. Clear communication before he gets twelve uh, of the doom tokens. So I'm gonna go first. Please. All Let's right. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. So here we are, limping towards the finish <laughs> line. We are two. Uh, Doom tokens away from losing and Azathoth waking up. And then we are three? Three, I think. Three Elder Signs away. What have we got? Like 11. Yeah, we're three three away from winning. Uh, So, anyways, it is midnight, I do believe. It is midnight. We are. You just got your new character. I got my new character because my last one was devoured. So I'm now uh, using Jacqueline Fine. She's a psychic. And once a day when a Mythos card is drawn, she can spend a clue, clue token to discard that Mythos card with no uh, effects, but then you have to take the next one. So, yeah. you know, it's not like we don't get uh-huh. one, but uh, I don't have any clue tokens, so maybe I'll try to get some, but we do have to draw one now because it, it was well, just midnight. It says either add a Doom token to the Doom track, which we do not want to do, uh-huh. <clears throat> or the investigators as a group can discard two spells. Well, I do have a spell and you have, have a spell. One. I would say let's do that. At this point, we don't need to... We don't want to add another yeah. uh, Doom token. Yeah. All right. And that's my turn. And I... Oh, well, I'm not going to move your guy. Nope. I do that at least once a game. You, Yes, you do. It's a little tradition of mine. Also, using my guy's ability, I am going to heal myself nope. one stamina. That's my ability. I'm not cheating. Cool. Anyway, go ahead. All right. So I am going to try the log... Of the Persephone. She sounds nice. Yes. All right. So, I uh, have to do these in order because there's an arrow. But I'm also going to use my Ruby of Riley to add the red die to my dice pool. I need a two and a scroll. Let's do it. Two and a scroll. I got a scroll. You got a two. Got a two. 
All right. Yay. I will put that there. Then Comes the I hard need part. a three or, well, I got to get three because I got to do them in order. Um, got a wild. I can do the, I can turn this into if a you want three. To. Yep. Well, I, I think rather than lose a die, I yeah. would do that. I would like to have kept that wild, but now I've got four dice. I need a uh, tentacle or a terror. Yeah. And I got one. Look Yay. at that. Now, I do have to lose two sanity. Yes. All right. But then you gain two clues. But then I gain two, two clues. Spells. Two okay. spells. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Finally, one something. This card is a trophy with a value of five. That's cool. Oh. And then a basic spell. All right. Then I get this card. I go over here. Got a whole bunch of trophies. Get this card worth four. Yes, I do. And I will start okay. using those. I, yeah, All right, I this so. is going to come out. It's got a terror effect. It's got an elder sign. Clock moves up. It is your turn. What do I do at this point? Because I actually am interested in that one. Mm -hmm. the, co the threat to me is the same about losing sanity on a terror. Yep. Um, but this one requires terrors to be rolled. This one does not. That's, I think, easier rolling. I think so, too. Well, um, easier rolling. Yeah, I mean, the way we're rolling, let's, nah. Yeah, let's do this one. But, Why not? Okay. Not to mention, it'll also, it, upon succeeding, it'll also do another, uh, whatever it's called. Other world card, yeah. Yeah. So, let's get these and try our best. Six. I got a three. And, I mean, I have it. You can do the six, but then that leaves you less dice to... Work with. Yeah. yeah. So there's my six. Not ideal, but... But this yeah. game isn't made to be ideal. No. It really isn't. Bloop! Oh, and you got, got a terror. A big, fat, nothing. Oh, terror. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You lose a... All right. Thing. Perfect roll. Coming right up, folks. Two scrolls. We can do it. Scroll. What? Oh, my goodness. That's the best roll in the whole game! <laughs> I didn't fail! Oh my gosh, you guys! We're gonna put a time slot down in the description to get to this moment. It's that oh, special. I forgot to turn the camera on. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <sighs> believe to me. I can't believe it. What you guys don't know is that we've had to restart so many times because he's been coughing. So. When he said that, yeah, I'm calling you out. He goes, we didn't start the camera. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So you get, well, there is a monster. Yeah. All right. There's also this though. But there is that. There is a clue for you. Yes. And an elder sign, mm -hmm. uh, which you already did that, right? Yes. Okay. And another world card. And uh, uh, Take your card. And we need to, we got to bring out the monster. So if you can draw the monster. I'll draw an easy one. Don't worry about it. Well, there's three places he could go. This is not an easy one. I lied. This is an eight plus a curse. And, uh, yeah. All right. But right now, I'm going to spend two trophies to heal my uh, sanity back up to seven. Four, five, six, seven. Move the clock, and it is your turn. Um, I am also going to do that. Okay. Because I need to be healed. So I'm going to do right. that. I'm going to refill my sanity. All right. So you're up to five sanity. Mm -hmm. All right. Good deal. Now it is midnight again, uh -huh. which of course, do we have any midnight effects? I don't see any. No, but I am going to heal myself since it's midnight yeah. back up yep, to that. Good. So I'm only one short on stamina, which is good. Yeah. Um, this one had a lingering effect uh, that the next time the clock strikes midnight, discard all other world cards from play and do uh -huh. not replace them. So yeah, those are going to go. Well, poop. Yeah. But then <clears throat> we, do, we do come to this one that I just drew. I can... Uh, basically, it's either add a doom or go to the next card. Um, 
You know what? Let's go to the next card. Okay. Might be a fatal mistake. Probably. Add three doom. No. Yeah. Okay. This is better. A uh, a monster appears. I would rather have a monster right now than. Hopefully, it's an easy monster. No, ah! oh, sorry. No, it's not. It's a mummy. Yeah. Let's, so let's do that. that. We don't, may not even if we can get this. We only need two more elder signs. If we can just uh -huh. get them. I guess it's my turn now. It is. So I am going to go to the souvenir shop. And I am going to get a unique item for three trophies. Two for a common item, mm -hmm. and then... Or four for a... Um, spell. Spell, which... Um, I'll, get, I'll just get a common item for now. All right. Spend two, get a common item, hopefully something good. Museum map. Before moving, discard uh, to discard one adventure card along with all monsters on it, replacing it with a new adventure card. This card cannot affect other world cards. I'm going to go with this one. I don't know that it's going to help. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, I got to do some crazy rolling here, but I'm going to try. Okay. Got a spell that could help me. I've got the two <clears throat> uh, yeah. tentacles. That's... It's not going to get better than that on no. a single roll. And then two scrolls would be perfect. One, got one scroll. I uh, can't do it now, can I? Because if I lose this, I could focus that, but then I only have one die left, so there's no way that I can get what I need. I could go for that monster. Yeah. Because I get that even if I don't get the cards. Let's try it. Might as well. Might as well, yeah. Got a three. Not today. Well, actually, I can use the focused one on him because it's either a scroll oh, or a skull. Oh, then, yeah, I would go ahead and do so, that. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll take the monster, and that uh, is worth a trophy, so that's something. Yeah. Um, but I did fail the adventure, so I do have to lose a sanity. Yes. And that's all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this. Okay. So we're going to get rid of this guy. And we'll get rid of the whole card. Get rid of the whole yeah, card. And, and the monster, yep. And we'll replace okay. this one. Hopefully and hey, one. Elder Sign. Oh, it's a tough one. But And there is a midnight effect on there. Yeah. All right. But um, you also get to take your regular turn. I mean, I'm a go for going it. Going for it? Going for it. All right. I'm... A brave boy. Two, three, four, five. I do have a clue, so that's you know, that's good. It's, a, it's a backup. You can reroll. So I need a bunch well, of here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got two scrolls. If you used your clue, mm -hmm. you can reroll any number of dice. Yep. So you could not reroll those and reroll these to try to get that third. Yeah. Um, elder sign or. Scroll. Yeah. That's up to you. I'm just giving you, because I know yeah. you haven't played this very much. So That's fine with me. I'm not yeah. trying to tell you what to do. Yeah, you are, but I'll take you up on it. All right. Didn't get it, but you got a three, mm -hmm. and you got an elder sign, so you could finish that bottom one. Yeah. And now all you have to do is, roll is get perfectly. three and <laughs> three scrolls. I did it once before. I'll do it again. <laughs> Just not today. Well, tentacles. We were we were needing tentacles earlier. I needed, in the the, game. I needed that exact combo. Yeah, earlier. you did. You're right. Yeah, you sure did. So that didn't work. All right. Well, you lose two sanity. So it says next time the clock strikes midnight, all investigators lose two sanity. So we all lose two sanity. Oh goodness. Yep. Now we draw another one. A monster appears. We'll take that. That's better than Doom Token. And he can go. Well, okay, it's a cultist. They're not. Uh -huh. not not a tough one. Let's put him here. Let, unless you have other suggestions. I don't. There is a midnight effect in play. Okay. Each investigator must either spend two trophies or lose a sanity and a stamina. Hmm. 
Well, uh, I will spin two trophies. Eh, okay. All right. I forgot I had those, to be honest. Yep. All right. So, it's my turn. Man, I just... Uh, you know what? I am going to go back here. I'm going to spin two trophies. Oh, no. I'm no, not. you're not. I'm going to spin five trophies. Spin five. And I'm going to get an ally. Okay. Allies are usually pretty good. And none of us have had an ally this game yet. Maybe that's where we're going wrong, you know? Place one unique item, one common item, and one spell on him when he joins you. You can use these cards as if they were your own. So basically I get a uh, unique item, a common item. Mm -hmm. So that's good in a spell. So that's really good. All right. So we're going to say these are the ones I got from John Legrasse. Okay, good. I did get that. I can get blessed. Okay, this is good. This is good. Okay, well, I well, I don't really have a way to heal or anything. Not mentally. So, <clears throat> considering everything on here, except for that, which I don't want to do, yeah. will take one sanity from me if I lose. I might as well risk it for the biscuit at this point. So, I'll go for that one. Okay. Because I think it's the least bad of them, maybe. Yeah. Uh, where's my guy? over here. All right. All right. So I need two scrolls. I have two scrolls. Yes, you do. I need two tentacles. I have one tentacle. I can focus it, right? You can. I might as well. Yeah, you lose Don't one. Lose yep. one. Come on, tentacles. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. Okay. Lose a sanity. Uh -oh. So I'm dead. You're dead. Also cost us a, uh, a doom token, which also adds a monster. So let's get the monster out of it now. And this is your new character. Okay. This is a bad monster. I'm going to put him here because there's no elder sign on that. So who do you got? I have Harvey Walters, the professor. Once per roll during his turn, Harvey may, ch may change one die, showing a tentacle result to a uh, scroll result, which might come in handy. Might come in handy down here or something. That's, for sure. that's actually very true. It probably will. My turn. Yes, I'm going here. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to use this card mm -hmm. to become blessed. Okay. It's going to add the white die to my uh, pool. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to do this one to get the red die because I just I, I want to get you this. You want to win. I do. So it's going to give me all six of these. It's going to give me the red die. It's going to give me the white die. Okay. All right, here we go. Knock this thing out. All right. Um, I got see two tentacles. I see got tentacles. two scrolls. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the tentacles on there. Mm -hmm. Then, to, to save these two and guarantee my win. I mean, that leaves us with only needing one more Elder Sign, I think. Yeah. I, so. Okay, I'm going to do that. I just, yeah, just do it. But I'm also going to go ahead and roll because I want to see if I... Don't need to use them. Don't need to use them. Okay, I got one, but I, okay. that's not enough. So I gotta roll again. Uh, failed and failed. Okay. okay. But I'm gonna use these two to, so I succeed. I get rid of my spells. Yeah. But we do get another elder sign and I get another spell. Four, eight, 12, 13, All right. One more needed. Get one more spell. And Harvey yep. Walter's gonna make it happen. Man, this is down to the wire. One, one. Yeah, we're we're one, on one elder one. sign, one doom token, and we are also at the last round before midnight. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. 
I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to make it happen this time. I'm going to succeed this time. Can I add that red die? Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. Let's do that. <clears throat> Uh, then I also have the Voice of Raw spell, which says, after rolling, discard to change one die to the result of your choice. Oh. So I have two things that could help me. Right. So don't let me forget those. Right. So tentacles, the scroll, and then one anything. Yeah. So anything. All right. I got get two, two scrolls. scrolls. Um, don't have tentacles, but you well, could. But I got, I got that bottom row, though. Yeah. Because I got a three. Or you, or you could do the top roll and use your card. You know what I'm saying? I would do that. Do the top because row. you've got you've got two scrolls. Yeah. Then if you used your card, you can change anything to a to anything, right? Uh oh. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And it's going to be a lot easier to roll one more than yeah than know. three and three on the same roll. Okay, yeah. you're right. So, so change this to a scroll. Yep. And so you have the top row done. Yeah. All right. So I need a spyglass with a three. Yep. And one scroll. Yep. There's a two. Oh I got one gosh. scroll. Oh my That was gosh. a failed roll, so I can focus this. You can. All right. So you just need three. Oh boy. Come on. Please. <laughs> Did I get oh, it? No. You got a Wait. two. Oh, you shoot. Need, you need three. Oh my goodness. Okay. No, I got excited. I'm doesn't, sorry. Doesn't count. Unless it lands in. <laughs> it was a two, but it doesn't. Okay. Count. All right. Maybe it's for the better. <sighs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Walters. The old Harvey <sighs> got a three. Adds an elder sign. Add it. Add it. Add the elder elder sign. Let's count them. One, One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. As a thoth goes, <coughs> like you earlier. Like me earlier, yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was tight. It was an, uh, an emotional roller coaster. Yes, it was. It really was. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun. Glad you joined us. Hope you're enjoying the Summer Spectacular if you're watching this on the Dice Tower. And if you'd like to check out our uh, YouTube, our humble YouTube channel, uh, Doug and Doug Gaming, just do a search for that on YouTube. You'll find us. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. For now, I'm Doug Jr. I am Doug the Third. Bye-bye.